Jesus. Glory be to God. Lord, I bless your holy name. God is good. Hallelujah. I know that for myself. This has been a week, but through it all, God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He woke me up this morning. Hallelujah. Not only did he wake me up, he gave me activity on my limb. Hallelujah. And then when I checked around, everything was well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he blessed us all to make it here safely without any accident or mishap. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good, Lord. Oh, we just want you, Lord Jesus, to know you're welcome. Oh, God, just tabernacle with us here today. Have your way, Lord God. Oh, God, we love you. And we thank you for loving us. We thank you, Lord God, for the gift of salvation. We thank you for this place called Turning Point Mission Center Church. And we just want to welcome everyone to God's house. A house where God loves abide. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We just want to thank God for this opportunity he's given us to come together once again. It's so good to see you all. Psalm was just seen for the first time this year. Praise the Lord. Glad you're here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He brought us across a whole nother year. And he started us on. We're on the 14th day of a new year. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, we just want to thank God for this opportunity to be here. Thank God for all of you that are pressed your way. Thank God for those who tune in from week to week via our internet, uh, YouTube ministry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for being here. We want to just continue to pray for one another and pray for those that may be on their way. Uh, we want to just now invite everyone to prepare their hearts uh, for prayer. You know, there's power in prayer. There's nothing too hard for God. No matter what you're going through, if you just call on his name, I know for myself that God will hear and answer our prayer. And see, we got to learn to talk to God when we're not in trouble. But even when we are in trouble, God is merciful and he will hear our cry. So we invite you to prepare your hearts now uh, for prayer, followed by the scripture reading. We're going to ask Deacon and Zilprinda, uh, Jenkins Howard, she will come for Howard Jenkins come for our uh, prayer, and we ask uh, Dignity Purvis to prepare for the scripture reading. We ask all that can to to kneel, uh, for those that can to kneel with us as we pray. And if you uh, just everything's going well in your life, just pray for your leaders here at Turning Point. Pray for the city of Jackson and Alicia. Pray for this nation. There's so many things we can pray for. Pray for the families who were impacted by the recent storm that came through. There's so much to pray for. So we now we're going to yield our hearts uh, to prayer as Deaconess uh, Howard uh, bring forth our prayer today. Amen. I just want to pray for everyone that's going through sickness, um, bereavement, their lost ones, Lord Jesus. And we want to also thank um, thank you for everything that you continue to do in our life and, yes, Lord. and that you do in our life for now, Lord Jesus. And also want to thank you for just looking out for us, Lord Jesus. Yes, yes. Without you, we would be anywhere, Lord Jesus. That's right. And we also want to thank um, thank you for the continuous blessing that you have upon everyone that is um, continuing to look forward to for everything that they're going through, Lord Jesus. We also want to thank you everything that you're that you're um, pertaining to do in our lives lord jesus some didn't make it this morning lord jesus some didn't wake up this morning lord jesus some are going through things this morning as i witness i saved life on thursday lord jesus um a co-worker lord jesus um she's in in icu right now lord jesus but i know she would make it through lord jesus um and i want to say a prayer for her that with her and her family as they continue to pray for her, Lord Jesus. And we also want to lift up prayers with the city, the councilmen, the world, Lord Jesus, that we need you now, Lord Jesus, in everything that we are doing, Lord Jesus. And I just want to say this first prayer for everyone. In your Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a praising God. 
Oh, yes. He is a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. And if God is not answering your prayer, check yourself. Because it's not that God is not able and not that he's not willing. God has turns. He has conditions. But he's a merciful God. He's a long-suffering God. And I just bless him. Thank you, uh, Dignity Howard, for that prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Stand for the reading of the scripture. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Good morning and happy Sabbath again, everyone. Morning, Our scripture Sabbath. this morning is coming from Isaiah chapter 30, verses 18 through 26. Amen. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 18 through 26. And the word of God reads, And therefore will the Lord wait, hmm. that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of the cry, thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. And, through the, and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, Yet shall not thy teachers be removed unto the corner any more, but thy eyes shall see thy teachers. And thy eyes shall hear a word, a word behind thee, saying, This is the way you the way, walk ye in it. Ye when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left, ye shall defile also covering of thy graven images of silver and the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a monstrous cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence. Then shall he give the rain of thy seed, and thou shalt sow the ground with them, and bread of the, of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fat and plentiful, and that they shall thy cattle feed in large pastures. The oxen likewise, and the young asses that are the ground, shall eat clean provender which have been w renowned with the shovel and with the fan. And there should be upon every high mountain, upon every high hill, rivers and streams of water in the days of the great slaughter when the tower falls. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of the seven days. Hmm. And the day that the Lord binded up the breaches of his people and heal us the stroke of their wounds. Amen. Amen for the reading of God's word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Deaconess, for reading that word. Hallelujah. There's nothing like the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank you. We have uh, a selection. The next voice you hear will be the message for today. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. But we wear the thorn and the towel. Thank you all over. Hallelujah. You'll work it out, Lord. Oh, God, we're so grateful that you have worked things out over and over again for us. We thank you, Lord God, for being a faithful father. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity you've given us once again to come to your house. Lord God, it's not that we are so perfect, but you are a perfect God, and you're a merciful God, and you're long-suffering, your goodness. You do all these things to draw us to repentance. Hallelujah, Lord. We stand today before you, Lord, and say thank you for this opportunity. We also humble ourselves. And we yield ourselves to you, Lord. We ask you to just have your way. And Lord, move me out the way. Speak to me and speak through me, Lord God. Move on the hearts of your people. Let them hear you speaking to them today, Lord. And if, we are, if they're facing anything, Lord, let them have faith that you will work it out. Help them not to throw it in the towel, Lord. But help them to trust you, Lord. Speak, Lord God, for your servant hear thee. Move, Lord God. Heal, Lord God. Deliver, Lord God. Restore right now, Jesus. Work it out. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. We thank God for digging this prayer and reading the scripture. Uh, she came from Isaiah chapter 30, verses 18, 18 through 26. And I will read in your hearing verses 19 through 21. The word of God says, For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem, that thou weep no more. Hallelujah. Somebody be shouting right there. Thou shall weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer. And that's God. God is that he. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thy enemies, I'm, I'm sorry, but thy eyes shall see thy teachers. Verse 21. And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. The word for the people of God and the word today is God got your back. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God got your back. As we look at this passage of scripture in the book of Isaiah, starting in, in verse 30, I'm sorry, chapter 30, starting at verse 1, it says, Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit that they may add sin to sin. I give praise to God for this opportunity to stand before his people. And I thank God for this opportunity to share the word he's given to me to share with you. We thank God for our elders of this house, Elder Monica, who's with us this week. She wasn't able to be here last week because of other things. And Elder Jackie Sorrell and Elder Blevins, who were here last week, not to be with us today. And all our deacon, deaconess, and all my sisters and brothers make up the body of Christ throughout the land, but especially here at Turning Point. God got your back. And there are conditions associated with that. First of all, the phrase, uh, I got your back, it means I'm looking out for you. And you have nothing to worry about. And the root digging of the garden is in the times of war. One warrior protecting another by protecting the position that the other can see. And none of us can see behind our back if we're looking forward. So the point is, if we're looking forward, we're looking at Jesus. We got our eyes fixed on Jesus. We ain't got to worry about what's going on behind us. God got our back. And Isaiah 30 starts with woe to the rebellion children. And so that lets us know if we are rebellious, then God can't have our back because we are leaving, walking away from him, and we're not looking at him, but we're looking at others. Goes on, says, says you take counsel, but not of me. And what that is saying is uh, the people, God's people, God's chosen vessel, his chosen people, uh, and this is Judah in, 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 in this particular case, because um, Samaritan and, and uh, Israel have been defeated by the Syrian army. And Judah was in their eye. And so what was going on here, Judah was afraid that the Assyrians going to overtake them. And God said, so you were taking counsel, but you didn't take it from me. And that last part it said that they may add sin to sin. I said, wow, what is that, Lord? How did that happen, Deacon is Purvis? And as I studied a little deeper, God says that Israel, I'm sorry, Judah, were in this predicament they were in because they had not taken counsel from God. They had sought help from others. And to make worse, they were already in this predicament. That's why the Syrian army was permitted to attack them because they had rebelled against God. They had turned on God. They have not uh, obeyed his voice. They had dis disregarded the word that God gave them through his servant, his prophet. 
And many times that happens in our church today. The word may come forth from the desk, your pastor, or elder, whoever bring forth the word. You may hear it, may reject it, and you may hate on a person, get upset because it's speaking to you, but that part of you that not connect to God. But because if God speak it, you can reject it all day long, not going to alter God's word. And so, and in sin, the sin was saying, you're already in trouble because you have disobeyed me, you rebelled against me, and now and that's the first sin and then they're going to go to Egypt seeking help now Egypt a few years back had uh, refused to pay penalty to the Syrian army they wanted them to pay uh, you know how they were making these people pay all this money to protect them and to because they were bad big and bad and everything but, but uh, Egypt refused to pay uh, the Syrian army the Assyrian Empire. And so that means the Assyrian was definitely upset with Egypt. Now, Judah, Brother Ricky, uh, has gone, a group within has sought help from Egypt to protect them. They had not sought help from God, but they went to Egypt. And Egypt is a weak nation by now. And so by them seeking help from Egypt and the Syrian army is already upset with, Israel, with Egypt, they're really going to come out to Judah now. So they made things worse for themselves. Sometimes we do that. Sometimes we're already in trouble. But rather than, uh, as my aunt would say, fessing up, I know it's not a word, rather than fessing up, you go ahead and try to defend that lie and add to it and make things worse. Rather than say, okay, I was, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Let's start over. And, and many times when you do that, if that person has any godliness in them, they are willing to, to forgive you and, and try to start over and work things out. But the word goes on and let us know that they went to Egypt for help. And God said, told them, uh, told uh, Isaiah to write it down on the table. In other words, he said, I want this to be a permanent uh, lesson, reminder in being part of your history for other generations to learn. Don't seek help from, from the world, from the Egypt. Come to me. Cry out to me. That's what he's talking about over there in our focus. Trip. He said, God says in his word, uh, he's, in, in verse 18, he says, the Lord wait. The Lord wait. See, he, and he's gracious unto us even though we have gone against his will he is waiting for us and he invites us to come back to return and when we return to him he will be long suffering and and he will hear our cry thank you lord amen amen but here they did not and god says because you have sought help from egypt and you didn't turn to me and I invite you to come back. I gave you a chance to repent. Verse 15 said, the, the Lord says, The whole one of Israel, in returning and rest, shall ye be saved. In other words, you return to me, you rest in my will, I'm going to save you from the Syrian army. Now, the Syrian army was a bad army. They were tearing everybody. They were destroying everyone. They'd already conquered Syria, Jerusalem, the only one standing. And so uh, Judah was very, very afraid because Israel already fallen to them. So they had a reason to be afraid and concerned. But God says, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. In other words, God said, when you rest in me. You don't have to fight. You just have confidence in me. I will fight your battle for you. The enemy may come. There may be all types of whirlwind coming against your enemy on this side, the enemy on that side, the enemy in the back of you, even in front of you. You may be surrounded by your enemy. But God says in the word, in quietness and in comfort shall be your strength. Sometimes, ladies, and men too, but I use us as an example, we need to shut up and listen. Sometimes we're so busy on expressing our views, and, 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 and it may be that your significant other, your spouse, has, has said something that brought up you the wrong way, and they may be wrong with what they said. But God is trying to get you to be quiet and have confidence because he's going to fight that battle for you. God is going to deal with that situation in the wee hours of their sleep. He can give them a dream and help them to see what they, the error of their ways. But we are so busy talking. But God says in quietness 
and in confidence shall be your strength. Then he goes on and says, and ye would not. He told him, come back to me. I will forgive you. I will save you. You just be quiet. And I'm confident in my ability to fight your battle. But they would not. Judah felt that if they got these horses, because at this point in time, the Assyrian army had introduced cavalry. They had gotten all these horses and they had these array and everything. And so when, when Judah saw that and they said, we had horses like that, we could be able to defeat them, we could stand them. Then we got Egypt helping us to back us up. We'll be victorious. How many know our deliverance not in our finances, not in our position, and who we are, what status we have, but our deliverance in God, our faith, and our confidence in him. And God says, these very horses you're asking for, they're going to be your demise. You're going to think you're going to be able to run, but you're going to run in defeat with your head down. And so, as we look at God got your back, we have to realize that even though we may say that to one another, but God can deliver what he says. When God says, I got your back, to so Michelle, he actually have our back. I may tell you that, and when you need me, I'm nowhere to be found. You call me, I don't answer the phone. You text me, I don't respond. Or whatever the mean may be, I, I may let you down. I, I may tell you what my mouth, I got you covered. I may say, I'm right here behind you. I, I'm here to help you. I'm going to defend you. Girl, I got you. And then when you need me, or when you need that person, they're nowhere around. So God says, don't put your confidence in man. Put your confidence in God. That's not saying we're not to trust one another. No, he's not saying that. We ought to trust our spouse. We ought to trust our leaders. We ought to trust all those that he placed over us and in our lives. But that trust goes to a certain extent. You trust with faith and confidence that God's going to deliver. And if you see evidence that a person is not trustworthy, then you need to change, shift your focus. I was uh, speaking with someone. They were saying how they had a sign. God had been talking to them about some things, but they, they kept praying, and, and, and they felt that God gave them permission to move forward. And, and one of the uh, things they were talking about was um, marrying this person. And uh, this lady pulled a gun on him before they got married. But he went ahead and married her. Needless to say, the marriage didn't work out. That was a big sign right there, Sister LaPrenda. Because if, if I were contemplating marrying somebody and they pull a gun on me, I think there would been an answer I needed right there. I don't think I had to pray any longer to God. Because, see, and, and we many times tend to change people, try to change people rather than accepting what God is revealing to us. You know, if a person show you that they are a serpent, you need to believe that that's what they are. And that they tell you that too, trust the Lord. So, um, as we continue to look here in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, it says, and therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all that wait for him. See, there are blessings in life for us as we wait on God. It's, it's always right to pray. And then you really need some power. You need to fast and pray. But we still got to wait on God because God does, all, does not always answer right away. See, God is perfect. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows we may not be yet ready for the blessing that we're asking for. So he may be delaying things so that we can, he can do a greater work to get us ready for that. But we got to learn how to to wait on God. Verse, and, and, and see, in verse 18 it says, the Lord will wait. So that lets me know that we not, don't always get it right the first time, but God is willing to wait on it. He's gracious. He's gracious, and thank you, Lord. 
And, and he also is a merciful God. Verse 19 says, For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Talking about his people. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. So we got to learn to talk to God. We got to learn to talk to God in the wee hours of the night. Got to learn to talk to God in the early morning. Got to learn to talk to God in the midday, in the evening, whatever time may be situation come we got to learn to talk to God and we got to make sure we're talking to God because if we're not talking to God we're going to fall on our face because we did not fall on our knees and see we got to learn to talk to God and I ain't talking about that 10 minute devotion do every morning it's nothing wrong with having no devotion we need to start our day out but if 10 minutes going to take you through the whole day of adversity and all the try and all the issue you're mistaken we got to be in constant communication with God. I'm not saying you walk around all day just praying, 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 praying. You got to have a prayer for spirit. And got to be so sensitive to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit alter your plan, you got to be willing to alter just like the Holy Spirit tells you. God got your back. But we get so distracted by life because we are not talking to God. We're talking to everyone else but God. We're not talking to God. God is waiting. Verse 19, he says, uh, he says, God be very gracious at the voice of thy cry. So that's saying we cry out to God. We pray to God. We seek God. God hear us. He, he hears when we cry to him. And when we cry, he said he will answer. He didn't say he wait till tomorrow, the next week or whatever. He says when you cry, he will hear your cry and he will answer. So we got to fix our eyes upon Jesus. And we got to stop looking at other people to validate who we are. We got to stop looking at what someone else has. We don't know what they're doing to have what they have. Their, their name brand clothes, their nice car, their beautiful home, their beautiful children, all the things they're doing. They may be overstanding in debt. They may have their credit card maxed out. They may have all types of things going on, but you can go to bed at night and sleep it all night long because you don't have that much, but you're not stressed out. You're not worried. We got to learn to talk to God. God says in his word, he says, uh, I'll be very gracious to you. Uh, and when you cry out, I will hear you and I will answer your cry. And we have to remember what God tells us in the book of Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. It says before I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee. So there's nothing about us God does not know. Hallelujah. We can't hide anything from God. We're fooling ourselves that we think we're hiding something from God. We may hide things from other people. We may hide things from ourselves. I know I've given, I put something up and came for life. Remember where I put it? I hid it very well. Wasn't trying to hide it. But God knows where it is. And I hear yeah, I search and I search and then I cry out to God, he'll lead me to it. He knows. In, in the word, in Jeremiah 1, 5, it says, Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. So I want you to know, don't feel that you are unimportant. Don't feel you don't have value. Don't feel that you don't have this and don't have that. Every one of us, God when he formed us, he sanctified us. And he not only that, he ordained us for a work. And we, are, we got to remember, God makes no mistake. So whoever we are, we are who God wants us to be if we yield ourselves to him. Now, we can disobey God just like Judah did. God didn't force us on a pathway of righteousness. But if we desire to be saved, we desire to live a holy life, God will help us. And, and, and we have to understand that God uh, knew us before we were born. And he already have a plan for our lives. So before we made a step, God already had our back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So we step into uh, those seasons of our lives where we feel overwhelmed, 
or we don't see no way forward. God got your back. God finishes what he begins. God does not procrastinate like some of us. He is right on time. He is not running behind. God did not forget you. It may seem like what you're going through that God has forgotten you, but I want you to know God has not forgotten you and let God help you. How do you let God help you? You call on God's name. You cry out to God. And God said, as soon as you call him, he said, I will answer. Hallelujah. Turn the point. Are you calling on God for help? Or are you going to the Egypt of the world? Are you going to your best friend? Are you going to your parent? Are you going to that, 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 that counsel, that ungodly counsel? Who are you seeking help from? God lets us know that we cry out to him. He will hear us. But so often, we cry to everyone else. And then we'll cry out to God. We're crying out. Are you crying out by lashing out in anger? Are you crying out by doing crazy things? Are you crying out by being rebellious? You know, when, when you are fearful, you act out in so many different ways. Sometimes our children do things, you ask them why they can't, oh, you know, just do the shoulder. That's a form of cry out there too. But God said we cry out. He got our back. And some of them, they say, cry out to the Lord. Say, Lord God, come quickly. I need your help. I need a Red Sea experience. I've I, I got trouble all around. Pharaoh's about to overtake me, Lord God. Come quickly, Lord. Hallelujah. And you cry out, guess what? God come. He comes and he rescues you. Somebody else may say, Lord, come quickly. I, I need these chains broken. Everywhere I turn, I'm bound, Lord. Lord God, I need your help, Lord. I need liberty. I need you to set me free. And you cry out to God, God will break every shackle that got you bound. And sometimes life have us beat up. And we feel ourselves falling. We feel ourselves being so weak. We cry out to the Lord, Lord God, come quickly. I need your strength. Lord, I need your strength. Lord, I'm about to give up. Lord, I can't make it any longer. Lord, I don't see how I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. And we cry out to God. God will come in and give us strength. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 30, verse 20, the word of God says, even though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. So God does not say that we won't have to go through some adversity and, and have some affliction. In other words, sometimes God has to let us go through and eat the bread of, a, of adversity and drink the water of affliction to, to, to break us, to draw us back, Brother Jackson, into that relationship. Because as, as God bless us sometimes, Sister LaPrenda, Dickens LaPrenda, sometimes we get so caught up in the blessings and forget to give God the praise. God has blessed us and our life is easy. We're able to pay our bills. We're able to go into the, to the kitchen and find whatever we want to eat and we don't see what we want to eat. We can get it. We can door dash and have them bring it to us and go out and get it. Uh, we can go and open our closet up and our closet got clothes, 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 clothes on. You see, even got the tag on. All these things. Those are blessings from God. But if we don't cry out to God, we'll begin to take God's blessing for granted. And God will let us have to eat the bread of, of adversity and drink the water of affliction to break us, to draw us back so that we will be able to cry out to him. And we cry out to him. He will hear us. Through hardship. Through rejection. Through failure in life. Through, you may be a struggling parent. You may be losing your job or sickness. Or whatever the case may be. And we have to realize that disobedience to God causes us to seek help from the Egypt of the world. 
rather than crying out to God for help. When we cry out to God for help, God will break that bread of uh, adversity and he will destroy that water of affliction and bring us back to a close relationship and we'll be stronger than we ever were before. God got your back. Even though you may be uh, eating bread of adversity and drinking water of affliction, don't be discouraged. Don't throw your hand up. Don't give up. Just know that God got your back. Hallelujah. God got your back. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But don't let disobedience be the reason you're drinking the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. Because if that's the reason, you're guilty like Egypt. And even God said, come back. I will save you. I will give you comfort. I will give you quietness. I will, I will protect you. But we re don't return to God. We don't accept his offer. We'll have to go through hard times, even longer. We got to learn to talk to God at all times, not just when things are bad. We got to learn to talk to God throughout the day. And if we continue to look at, at verse 20, that's Isaiah 30, verse 20. He said, yet shall not thy teacher be removed into a corner anymore. So anymore means there has been a time that, that God's teachers were put in a corner. And what God is saying, that God is saying, my servant, my like, like Isaiah and all my other faithful servants, the people of God had rejected the word of God from his servant. And they had, when you put them out of the corner, you put them in time, you ignore them. You just don't pay them any attention. And God God said, no longer is that going to happen. And God goes on to say, but your eyes shall see my teacher. When you stop rejecting the voice of God that come from the men and women of God, then you'll be able to see my teacher. You'll be able to hear my voice. Hallelujah. And then that's where it leads to the verse 21. He says, and thy ear shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way. See, God want us to know. He wanted to lead us. He want to guide us. God got our back. Hallelujah. See, this word came from behind. Hallelujah. When you got your eyes fixed on Jesus, God is in the back of you. God is saying, go here, go there, turn here. Don't still go there, stand still, whatever needs to be done. God got your back. And when God got your back, I don't care what type of enemy and how many enemy come comes against you, God going to give you the victory. Hallelujah. When Hezekiah began to pray to God, hallelujah, God told Hezekiah that I'm going to give the Assyrian army to you. Hallelujah. And Hezekiah began to tell the army, don't be afraid because God got a hallelujah. We got to no turning point. We may have to go through some things, but if we keep our eyes on God and we continue to talk to God, cry out to God, God, we hear our voice. He hear our cry. And you do just like he said here. Hallelujah. There'll be a quiet voice from the backs and this is the way. Walk ye in it. And we obey the voice of God. We walk according to the voice of God. We won't go wrong. It may look like you're about to go off the cliff. But if you trust in God, keep on walking. And you get to the edge of the cliff and God said, go forward. You go forward because God already got a way of escape for you. He already has his angel right there to catch you up. Glory be to God. I said, God got my your back. God got your back. You may be facing some uncertainty. God got your back. You may be having some health challenges. God got your back. Your family may be going through the thing. God got your back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just got to be faithful. We just got to learn to cry out to God. And we cry out to God. God said it. I didn't say it. God said, hallelujah, that he will hear our cry. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And God said it. And I believe God's word. Hallelujah. God said, this is the way. Walk ye in it. And we walk like God said it. God got our back. Hallelujah. I say today, are you walking through a crossroad of your life? Uh, as you're walking, do you hear the voice of God? Is that the voice saying to you, walk ye herein? Hallelujah. This is the way God will grant us 
the God is of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will direct our path. The Holy Spirit will direct us right in the correct way. We may be about to go astray. Hallelujah! But God got our back, and He's behind us. He said, "Walk therein." Glory be to God. When God said, "Go to the left," Hallelujah! Don't go to the right, but go to the left because you go to the left. There's a blessing for you in the left. There's a breakthrough for you in the left. There's the Delivery at the left. There's salvation for you. Whatever you need. If you go to the left like God said. And there's your breakthrough right there. Thank you Lord. I said God got your back. And the moment you cry out to God. God will hear you. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. I said God got your back. When you cry out to him. Uh, with, uh, with sincerity and a spirit of humility. God got your back. When you wait, what you talking about when you wait, when you worship God according to the inspired teaching of his holy word, hallelujah. I said, God got your back when you fish, when, you, uh, when your faith inspires you to serve God faithfully. You may be serving God faithfully and you may come up with opposition. Don't be afraid. God got your back because you're walking according to the will of God. Hallelujah. I said when you obey the voice of God, no matter what comes against you, just know that God got your back. And God told his children, Israel, he said go forward. And he said one five, five uh, soldiers could put a uh, uh, thousand to flight. And, 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 and 100 can put 10,000 to flight. So when you're doing what God said, and you may be outnumbered, but go forth because God got your back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. I don't know what God got in store for you for 2023, but whatever he had, just go forward because God got your back. Whatever God tells you to do, God got your back. God says he's going to do a new thing. And he says, shall spring forth. God is letting us know, although we may have to go through some wilderness, he said he'll make a way in the wilderness. Hallelujah. I said, God got your back. Yes, he does. God got your back. No matter what you're facing, you may be facing some hardship. You may be facing some obstacles. You may be bound against the wall. You know, sometimes when a wrestling is on the floor, on the mat that they pin down, hallelujah, and some kind of way to get one shoulder up and to keep on working, moving in the flock, get back up there, get back on top of their opponent. Well, that's how it is. Circumstances may have you pinned down, but just know that God got your back and God is telling you to get up. God is telling you to move to the right. Shift to the left. Shift like God said. God got your back. So when you allow your faith to move you into obedience. Yeah, God got your back. God got your back when you walk. When you, how you talking about? When you walk in holiness. When you act in holiness. When you live and keep God's commandment. Hallelujah. When love is in your heart. When your eyes are fixed on Jesus. And you made up your mind to trust and to obey God. God got your back go forward. It doesn't matter what coming against you. You may not see how you can overcome the obstacles that's facing you. It may look like you're about to go down. You may feel like throwing in a towel. You may be ready to give up, but God got your back. So don't throw in a towel. Don't give up. Just trust God. He said cry out to him. When he hear your cry, he said he will answer. God says I got your back. God says I'm long suffering. God said I'm going to be gracious to you. God says I'm going to wait for you. Hallelujah. 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 God got your back. When you learn to walk with God, when you learn to talk with God, when you talk like Christ, you act like Christ, you love like Christ, and you're kind like Christ. So whatever comes against you, know that God got your back. I said, somebody out a shout out today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever you're facing, know that God got your back. Hallelujah. Can't you see God moving? Can you hear his voice? He's behind you. Hallelujah. That quiet voice behind you. That voice said, this is the way. So if you know God's voice, don't be afraid to go the way God tells you to go. The way you're going may seem dark and dismal. May seem like you're about to go into a wilderness. That's okay. God got your back. And now that God has your back. God is surrounding you. God is right there with you. God will protect you and God will see you through. So trust in the Lord 
God got your back. Hallelujah. God got your back. He will speak to you. Just open your ears up so you can hear the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit will speak to you. He'll tell you which way to go. He'll tell you how to accomplish what needs to be accomplished. The things that need to be done. I said God shows up on time. God equips you to do what he empowers you to do. And he'll be there for you. He won't procrastinate. He won't forget you. He won't forsake you. Hallelujah. I said God got your back. Hallelujah. God got your back. You may be going through some things right now. God got your back. Or you may just come out of a storm and you're trying to figure out how to get your equilibrium back. God got your back. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. You may be hurt because of things that have taken place. I want you to know God got your back. You may be facing some things that, that's coming up in your life that's troubling your spirit. God got your back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God got your back. And obey the voice of God. Hallelujah. If he tell you to walk, walk in faith. If he tell you to stand still, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God got your back. Whatever you're facing, God got your back. I came to encourage you today to let you know don't give up. I came to encourage you today to let you know it may look like you're about to go under, but it looks are deceiving. God got your back. Back. hallelujah don't be guilty like judah going to egypt for help but go to the lord and you go to the lord praise be to god god will hear god will answer god got your back god will tell you how to get through the maze god will tell you how to get through your problem god will work it out for you i said god got your back hallelujah thank you jesus yes lord Thank you, Lord. He got your back. Whatever you're facing, God got your back. Know that he got you, and he will not forsake you. God got your back. I got your back. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Just hold on. Hold on. God got your back. If you really believe God got your back, stand on your feet with me. You're standing to God and saying to the Lord, Lord, I know you got my back. And if you believe in your heart of heart that God know what you need, then begin to give him praise right now. He may not have done it yet, but give him praise because you know that he got your back. Hallelujah, Lord. I know you got my back, Lord. I have no doubt things I don't understand, Lord God. I'm still crying out to you. I'm holding on, Lord, by your strength, not my strength, Lord. Oh, God, I thank you right now that we can trust you, Lord God. You got our back, Lord God. We are facing some things, Lord God. Our backs may be against the wall. The world may be coming against us. The enemy may be ready to pounce on us. But, Lord God, just help us to hold on. Glory be to God because you got our back. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, somebody here today is standing. That's going through something. But Lord, they're standing right now believing and saying to you publicly, Lord, you got my back. Oh, Lord God, you said you'll speak to the quiet voice that this is the way. Walk ye therein. So, Lord God, help us to be obedient. Help us to walk in the way you plot for us. Lord God, you plotted a path starting last year on January the 17th. A pathway we didn't see coming. It's been a hard year, Lord. But Lord God, we're walking. We're walking. And we're waiting on you, Lord. And we're trusting you, Lord. We know you got our backs. And we are leaning and depending upon you to guide us, to navigate us through this pathway. Lord God, I believe I can speak for the whole church. There are times our hearts are just so heavy. We just probably ponder. I know I do. Lord, why? Why now? But at the same time, Lord God, I have faith that you've made no mistake. And there's a work for us to do. There's a path where you're plotting for each one of us. And you're preparing us. You're holding us up for our destiny. 
Lord, there is a destiny for each one of us, eternal life or eternal damnation. And on that pathway to eternal life, we may have to eat the bread of adversity and drink the water of affliction. But you told us that you got out of the bag. And we cry out to you. You will hear our cry. So, Lord, we're just simply crying out to you right now, asking you, Father, to help us to hold on. Asking you, Father, to help us to be all that you have us to be. Because we do believe that you know what we need. And we're trusting you to do it. So we thank you, Lord, for having our backs. We thank you for being a way maker. We thank you for being a miracle working God. We thank you for being an ever-present help. We thank you for being a loving, compassionate God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for hearing our cry. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for having our backs so that we may be able to stand. So, Lord, we just surrender our all to you. And, Lord, we ask for forgiveness of all the things that we have not done you told to do. Or ask for forgiveness of things that we did that we shouldn't have done. Lord God. Thank you for having our backs. And we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God got your back. He got your back. Hold on. Hold on. Help us on the way. He got your back. You may be.